The moose population in the inland northwest continues to decline. Now, Idaho Fishing Game officials are slashing the number of tags they're offering to hunters this year. Sunshine and warm temperatures today, but tomorrow, stormy weather begins to move into the inland northwest. I'll have your forecast next. We're very, very happy to, uh, to have this released for Spokane. It's been three years in the making, and now it's almost complete. We'll get an inside look at Spokane Public Schools' new line of buses. I will be a mayor who will work my heart out for Spokane. Well, just weeks after retiring from TV news, former anchor Nadine Woodward announced she is running for mayor of Spokane. She worked at Krem and KXLY for a combined 30 years. Her most high profile op opponent at this point is City Council President Ben Stuckert. He told Krem 2 News today he quote looks forward to discussing the issues and future of Spokane with all the candidates. Good evening and thank you for joining us. I'm Mark Hanrahan. Hi everyone, I'm Jane McCarthy. Durham Bus Services, which provides buses for Spokane Public Schools, they are rolling out a new line of buses and they're powered by propane. 54 of these brand new buses will be driving routes on Monday. Graham 2 is Amanda Broly shares the benefit of shifting away from diesel. In conjunction with Spokane Public Schools, Durham Bus Services plans to have 25% of its fleet powered by propane by next school year. You'll notice changes like this, a green sticker indicating what buses are powered by propane. And today we got to take a sneak peek. Durham Bus Services rollout of propane buses is the largest in the inland northwest. Washington, as, as we all know, is a very eco-friendly state. We are we're proud to to help that along. We're proud to cut down on all the um, all the particulates in the air. General Manager Santos Picasso says propane powered buses will improve Durham's eco footprint by 70 percent. So when the propane bus is running, um, again, the particulates that are going to be emitted from the bus virtually non-existent. It's uh, it's a safer footprint. Propane is also a bit more cost effective as it costs less than diesel and it's expected to require less maintenance time. It's also much quieter. Well, it's a lot quieter. I can hear the kids a lot better in the bus and don't have that big the diesel engine running in here, so it's a lot quieter. Because of the reduced noise, special ed buses are the first to be swapped out. That's because some of those students may be sensitive to the loud diesel buses. They'll also heat up much faster, which will come in handy on those cold winter months. The buses will be filled up on site from this 18,000 gallon propane tank. It's part of a contract with local propane company Northern Energy Propane. The 70 total propane powered buses in the Durham fleet will be marked with green logos, while the rest of the fleet will use eco-friendly diesel. Amanda Rowley, Krem 2 News. In other news, although parts of Washington had that record snow in February, it was not enough to bring the snowpack back to normal levels. Statewide snowpack levels sit at about 87%. According to the Department of Ecology, that is the 11th lowest average in the past 30 years. It is unlikely the snowpack will reach normal levels this month. Snowpack plays an important role in the state's water supply. It serves as a significant source of water for farms and fisheries. As for the weather right now, we're seeing clear skies and sunshine. Another beautiful day. It'll likely be a different story, though, tomorrow. Tom in the Weather Center tracking rain for the region. Tom. Yeah, we'll start off with a look at our current weather. We're at 61 degrees. As you mentioned, it's just been a terrific afternoon and now a really beautiful early evening. You can see the wind is out of the east northeast at five miles an hour. Increasing clouds this evening, mostly cloudy skies overnight. Rain developing by the time you're on the road for your morning commute right around uh, 6, 7 a.m. We'll see the rain. It won't be as warm tomorrow with a high of 57. Could get some afternoon uh, areas of heavy rain or isolated thunderstorms. Also going to see some wind gusts up around 20, 25 miles an hour. Continued unsettled wet weather for the weekend. 58 degrees on Saturday, 59 expected on Sunday. I'll check your 10-day outlook all coming up in a few minutes. Thank you, Tom. Well, hunters often seek them out in North Idaho. Sadly, they're becoming harder to find. We're talking about moose. Mm -hmm. The Idaho Department of Fish and Game says the number of moose has dropped in recent years, and that's prompting state officials to try and help the animals rebound. Our Taylor Vito spoke with Fish and Game. Well, this issue with moose isn't happening just here in North Idaho. It's occurring in other areas as well. But biologists here at Fish and Game say they're not 100% sure why it's happening. That's because moose, they say, aren't easy to study. 
These are just iconic species. People love to hunt them. People love to photograph them. But that thrill could become less common, experts worry. Yes, we'll often talk of moose in town, especially in North Idaho. But believe it or not, the amount of moose in North Idaho has declined. Across the state, we've been seeing numbers go down. Up until the early 2000s, moose populations grew in Idaho, Fish and Game says. And at that time, the agency increased the amount of hunting tags available due to moose encounters and collisions in town. But now, those hunters aren't having as much success. Experts say it's difficult to pinpoint exactly how fewer moose there are now, but they know numbers are declining. So moose are really hard to study. They don't herd up in big groups like we see deer or elk, so they're more solitary, they're harder to track. Theories behind the decline include climate change with warmer winters and longer summers, which are harder on the animals. Upcoming studies and surveys are planned by Fish and Game, and the agency earlier this year reduced the amount of moose tags available to hunters. Certainly a big deal for some awaiting their one and only shot at the iconic species. It's a big deal to us. I mean, people wait 20 years to get their moose tags. So for now, enjoy that next time you see a moose in a backyard or park because experts have some serious work to do when it comes to making sure the animals stick around. In North Idaho, Taylor Vido, Cram 2 News. In other news, support pouring in now for the families of Kittitas law enforcement. According to iFiber One News, Dutch Bros in Moses Lake raised more than $7,000 in honor of Deputy Ryan Thompson and Kittitas police officer Benito Chavez. Dutch Bros donated $1 from every drink to support their families. Both men were shot after a road rage incident last month. Chavez has a wounded leg and Thompson was killed. Wounded Montana Highway Patrol Trooper Wade Palmer regained consciousness today, more than two weeks after he was shot near Evero, Montana. Montana Highway Patrol says he is now in stable condition. Palmer was shot three times back on March 15th. He is scheduled to undergo reconstructive jaw surgery on Thursday. In a statement, his wife says, quote, we are deeply grateful for the outpouring of support and prayers for Wade and for us. Well, flu season has ramped up here in Spokane County. The latest report from the Spokane Regional Health District shows a late season surge in these cases. Krem 2's Alexa Block explains what this means and how you can stay healthy this spring. Health officials believe that they're seeing a late season surge of flu cases. Usually February is peak of the flu season. That's when they see more hospitalizations and deaths, and then those numbers tend to trend down. But this past March, they've actually seen the number of deaths climb. According to Spokane County health officials, there have been 22 deaths reported so far this flu season and 441 hospitalizations. Out of those 22 deaths, 18 of them were people who were unvaccinated and 68% of those people who were hospitalized were also unvaccinated. And while the percentage of unvaccinated people that are hospitalized is close to normal, the percentage of deaths are not. Health officials say it's really hard to predict when cold and flu season will actually come to an end. They say it's extremely unpredictable. Some years they've even had to go all the way until the summertime. So right now health officials are still recommending that people get a flu shot. They say it's a really good way to make sure you're protected from the flu bug. Alexa Block, Creme 2 News.